And I have seen the benefits or the capabilities of what CRISPR can do. So what are some of the limitations? So there's still a chance of off-target effects. No technology is fail-proof. The thing is that with genetic engineering, a mistake is way more de detrimental than just changing a couple lines of codes and deleting it because the, cha the mistakes that happen are permanent. And even though CRISPR is very accurate and there's only a 1% mistake chance, given that the human body has trillions of cells, 1% is pretty significant. I'll talk a little bit about the gene drive in a couple of slides. And the last limitation is that, yes, we may have been able to sequence a DNA, but there's still little understanding of the function of each gene. So I'll talk a little bit about pros and cons, because I think genetic engineering is a pretty gray area, and a lot of discussions and meetings tend to be inconclusive. So you guys can make up your own minds. So the first advantage is the application on insects. I'll use the example of a mosquito. By just editing and deleting a single gene in a mosquito, you can make them highly resistant to the malaria parasite, thus making them less likely to transmit it to humans. And as I said, I'll explain the gene drive the best that I can in a short amount of time. So a gene drive is basically a genetic element which causes DNA modifications to spread quickly. You can imagine that a gene drive is a set of instructions. So in combination with CRISPR, it will cut it out. It will scan the DNA, cut out all different versions, and it will use the gene drive as a template to patch it up. So together, it's an extremely powerful tool, making a heritability of 100%. The second advantage is the application on plants. So you can make a lot of crops insect repellent. But in my opinion, an even bigger advantage is the first step to tackle world hunger. Here you can see golden rice, which was invented by a group of ETH researchers in 2000. And golden rice, compared to normal rice, has vitamin A. And just last year, they invented a new rice. I don't have a picture for that. But it's a multi-nutrient rice. And as the name says it, it contains not just one, but also zinc, iron, and so on. The third advantage is the application for and on humans. So last year, actually, the first clinical trials began using gene therapy to treat cancer. And as you have seen in the video, CRISPR has the capability to cure mice with muscular dystrophy. And there's also a lot of promising results for other genetic disorders like ALS and cystic fibrosis. So what are the disadvantages, the bad side? So I mentioned the advantages for GMO, but GMO tends to be a very controversial topic, and these, these are some of the disadvantages that GMO brings with it. One would be the reduction of biodiversity. So by genetically engineering more insect-resistant crops, you also give them the chance to outcompete certain indigenous species, thus reducing the biodiversity. But not only that, usually the toxins that are added to make a crop insect resistant also tends to kill a lot of beneficial larvae, like from butterflies and moths, which will disrupt the ecological system. And I want to draw a parallel to antibiotic resistance from herbicide resistivity, just because you can't forget that there's always an ongoing evolutionary competition between what we create and the pests, because they were involved to overcome these hurdles too. And in the beginning, antibiotic, I mean, it did a marvelous job in curing quite a lot of illnesses, but now we're facing also the problem of superbugs that are created. 
And another disadvantage is the misuse and biological warfare. Well, biological warfare is pretty old news. I mean, it dates back to antiquity, but it really started to become sophisticated around the 1900s. And here you see a picture of the bacteria which causes anthrax. So these spores are usually dispersed through air for mass effect. And terrorists also put these spores in letters and packages, or they'll spread it through food and water. But you can imagine that with CRISPR, you bring biological warfare to an even higher level. And I could theoretically take a DNA of one individual here, genetically engineer a pathogen, and it could just kill that person, that specific person. So who can reap the benefits of such a technological advancement or experience the side effects? Basically everything that contains DNA, but I thought of making a diagram with what I think are the main stakeholders. So basically the government as the controller and the creator of policies and regulations and how the citizens would indirectly get influenced by the research and medical institutes and the products that are produced by the companies, and how we can influence the government is basically just through our voting. But we still have control over, or currently we still have control over what or how we want to choose for ourselves. Like if we go to the grocery store, we can choose between maybe buying GMO food or organic food. But I think as genetic engineering technologies get more accepted in society, that choice may be taken from us, where we just have the choice of GMO foods and GMO foods. Other concerns except besides GMO would be consumer eugenics. So biologists say that these DNA-altering techniques could lead to some sort of eugenics. I mean, it would be different than the typical <laughs> genocidal eugenics committed by the Nazis, but it would instead be used in a more positive light to delete negative traits, coining the new term of positive eugenics. But it's very different, it's a different story to use like these DNA modification techniques to delete any negative traits. And on the other hand, it also can lead to parents creating designer babies to make them stronger, more better looking, more intelligent. Which leads me to my next point of superhumans. So maybe we will be forced to use these type of technologies with the upcoming AI revolution, as I've heard from many of you guys' speeches. And there are already such genetic defects, if you can call it that way. There's actually a defect which causes our bones to be very dense. So there's this guy who has this genetic defect, and normally, after an accident which would result in broken limbs, he can walk away from it with all his bones intact. So even if we were to accept all these genetic engineering technologies and we were to be okay with it, there's still the problem of social inequality. If it were to become accepted, it would be heavily commercialized for the rich. But not only wealth is a factor, also gender, sexuality, ethnicity, or where people live could contribute to them being disproportionately affected by such gene edi editing techniques. And the last concern I want to mention before I move on to the solutions is, well, who is allowed to actually do and perform such gene editing technologies. Well, for $159, such a DIY bacterial gene editing kit could be yours and you could start engineering your pathogen 
And there are a lot of websites that make it very enticing for newcomers to genetically engineer a pathogen. They will include free RNAs, and you don't even need to have a biology background because they will provide a manual for first-timers. So what are some current solutions? Well, the more obvious ones, like the technical solutions, one would be physical barriers. So to have people do these experiments in a contained area, just in case something happens. And there's also an institute that, from Harvard which is working on reverse technologies to kind of change the gene edits that one makes in case it's a mistake. But it's not just a scientific problem, it's also a social and political problem. And the same institute is actually making a lot of their process and working documents um, public to encourage open discussions and to find new proactive measures to combat, yeah, to combat this. There's also in 2015, in December, there was an international summit where a lot of lawyers, scientists, and ethics experts, they gathered together to discuss about such gene editing techniques. And basically, they ruled that there would be a ban on genetically engineering embryos which were destined to become human beings. But a lot of scientists were actually also disappointed with the outcome because embryos, if they get the approval to perform such experiments, the embryos need to be destroyed after 14 days. The problem with that is that a lot of research takes longer than two weeks to prove any concept. And if you're against genetic engineering, there's also an open letter which basically prohibits um, germline gene editing. So my personal opinion is that I think it's scary because there's a lot of unknowns and the boundaries and regulations haven't been set. And any changes that come with genetic engineering are permanent, which I think is another thing that is kind of scary. You can't just change it. So basically, maybe you guys have more solutions or opinions or questions, and that will be it. <laughs>